if you're not comfortable on camera, don't go on camera. Write an article. There's lots of ways to put yourself out there. Have an amazing blog. Tweet up a storm. Be an Instagram amazing person. You don't have to do the stories, right? So I don't think that on camera is the ultimate for everyone. There are people who should not be on camera, Darla. Strategically 10x your influence with Betsy Helmuth. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your business? Then welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast, helping home professionals and luxury brands accelerate their success with proven marketing strategies and expert industry practices. Now, here's your host, Darla Powell. Hey there, welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I am your host, the grand high poobah of all things Wingnut here at the marketing agency Wingnut Social, Darla Jethro Powell. Is Jethro my real middle name? I don't know. You tell me. What, what do you guys think? No. The answer is no, it's not. My middle name does start with J, though, and you can send me an email to Darla at wingnutsocial.com and guess what it is. <laughs> I'll be awaiting your, your replies. Wingnuts, today we're talking to the inimitable Betsy Helmuth. You guys know Betsy Helmuth, right? She's super, super famous. She's been everywhere. She has been quite the success on television and magazines, and she has her own podcast, Affordable Interior Design, and we're going to get into how she's 10 x her influence. Because if you guys remember Jared Hanning's episode that we had just recently a couple of weeks ago, and that was episode 194. You guys, if you haven't checked that out, oh my God, it's mind-blowing. It's really a paradigm shift. We had some terrific feedback on that episode. But Jared walked us through what he calls mindset push-ups. And one of the little exercises was taking a realtor to do a little mindset exercise of going from four to 40 closings in a month, which seems impossible. But the way he spelled it out and thought it out was brilliant. But one of the things that he discussed was one of his clients, how do I broaden my influence to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, how can I make these alliances, was reaching out to local newspapers, local television shows, and pitching yourself as the expert to do a little session on there. And we kind of glossed over that. <laughs> but he made it sound like, oh, this is so easy. And I really wanted to dig in and see what would be the process if you're an interior designer or if you're a travel agent or if you're an expert in your local market to get that kind of exposure even beyond social media, to something like a local magazine or newspaper? And how does one even begin to start to get that kind of attention? So we're going to talk today to Betsy Helmuth about that. So let me tell you a little bit more about Betsy Helmuth. If you haven't heard of her, and if you've been living under a bridge <laughs> with the trolls, Betsy Helmuth is the owner of Affordable Interior Design and a nationally celebrated interior designer with the unique ability to transform modest spaces into beautiful environments on a budget. Betsy is known for her practical designs and her tell-it-like-it-is advice style. And that is true. I remember back when I was a cop, driving around, protecting the mean streets of Miami. I used to listen to her podcast, and she used to make me giggle with how direct she was. Really, really good. Oh, okay, let me get back to her bio. <laughs> I saw squirrels. She has appeared on, get this, The Today Show, HGTV, DIY Network, CBS, NBC, and in dozens of magazines and newspapers. Betsy leads an interior designer training program called the AID Academy, and she also penned a popular DIY design book, Affordable Interior Design, which are high-end tips for any budget. She hosts a home decorating podcast by the same name, which I discussed, and her firm has grown to serve clients in New York City, New Jersey, Westchester, Long Island, whew, and Washington, D.C. That is quite the resume. But before we get into my interview with Betsy Helmuth, I think it's time for a little social media mini news sesh. Mini news sesh. It's time for mini news sesh. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not right in the head. Okay, guys, if you remember way back when we were doing the little mini sods, when we had, um, well, I was going to say when we had more time on our hands, which we never really had, <laughs> we were going against nature, trying to create new time. But episode 153, we did discuss Instagram guides. And it hadn't been released in the U.S. yet. But guess what? Na -da -da -da. Instagram just released guides this week to all users. So you guys can check out the lowdown on that with episode 153, but I'll give you the brief overview here. So 
previously, this feature was only available to content creators. And Instagram started this in the height of the pandemic to be brochures, how to take care of yourself, how to function in a pandemic, things like that. But now you guys can put on there 10 marketing tips and gather 10 feed posts that relates to it. So basically, they're a one-stop umbrella for gathering feed posts, placing them together to make like a little like a little brochure, a little guide on something. Maybe you've had an infographic on here's the 10 top paint colors I would use in my doghouse. <laughs> and then you can link to it, post images that support it and have yourself a nice little uh, situation there for people to stay on your page. So what I like about this, and I haven't tried it yet because, like I said, they just released it to us, is that it's easier than a lot of the Instagram features because there's really no need to make new content. You can curate from content that you've already posted and use what you have. You can't use new content for it, but you don't have to. It just allows you to keep followers on your page longer and connect with you more. So go on, give guides a try today. But remember, too, that Instagram is not your website. So you want to balance this out with some of this amazing information on your website too, because you're not going to own it if you post all of your stuff on Instagram. But keeping people educated and keeping them rabid fans and giving them the information and the value proposition of why they're following your account, be worth checking out. Let's give it a go and see how you guys like it. All right, guys, now let's get into my interview with Betsy Helmer. Hey there, Betsy Helmuth. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? Hi, Darla. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on. I'm so excited to have you on. I was telling the listeners in the little uh, intro there how much I used to listen to you when I used to be a cop driving around fighting crime in Miami. And I just loved your direct advice to listeners about interior design on the Affordable Interior Design Podcast. So good. So good. And you know how much I love crime, Darla. If you've been listening to the <laughs> episodes, if I were not an interior designer, I would be a forensic detective. So, you know, you could make that career switch. I made the switch from being a sergeant in a general investigations unit to interior decorator. So I don't see why you couldn't do the opposite. There we go. Well, you know, I've been watching 60 Days In and you get just a glimpse at like a different angle of law enforcement. No way in hell, to use your word, Darla. No way <laughs> in hell. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Even on Dateline, I can never guess the killer. So <laughs> I, it's not really a gift of mine. I will say this. In this current climate, I got out at a really good time. I would not recommend anyone to go in law enforcement right now unless it's your super serious calling, passion in life. Become a firefighter, maybe, but no, I wouldn't do it. Run away, run away. So, Betsy, we had Jared Hanning on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he was doing a mindset exercise. And I did tell the listeners what the background was for that. And you guys really do need to go back and listen to that. It was an amazing episode. But he and I kind of glossed over one of the ways to make yourself more visible and expand your reach in an exponential kind of way <laughs> was to get on your local news, to get local television, newspapers and such. And, and we really didn't dig into that because we didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the topic of the episode. But guess what today's topic is? <laughs> Just that. getting on the local news. Yeah. Okay. So... Yeah. We have a, a really large audience, right? Designers just at the very beginning stages of their career, designers who have been around for 35 years. And some of them may be thinking, oh, that sounds amazing. I would love to be on television. It sounds a lot easier said than done. So let's talk about how you started. How long have you been doing that and been so visible in, in television and magazines, et cetera? And tell us how to do it. <laughs> well, I've been visible on television and magazines almost from the beginning because I really love television. Do you guys remember like Mike TV from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? <laughs> yeah, I do. I am Mike TV, Betsy TV. So I love all things TV and that's kind of the language I speak. And of course I'm in New York right now. I'm outside of New York in the suburbs, but it helps to be in a place where there's a ton of media. But the good thing about being in a place where there's not a ton of media, smaller towns, I'm from Missouri, is that there's less competition. And these news outlets and media outlets constantly need content. They need to feed the beast, right? So they are looking for stories. But people approach them the wrong way. You need to come to them with, I'm going to borrow a phrase that I learned from a business group, but a fresh slice of lemon pie. 
Darla, do you know, do you like lemon meringue pie as much as I do, Darla? I think it's my favorite. And I'm, I'm not lying. A key lime is actually one step above for me. Well, I was born in Key West, so I am a key oh lime aficionado. God. So there you go. A little, little trivia. I have a hardcore crush on Key West, but um, that's <laughs> for another episode. Let's say a fresh slice of key lime pie. You know how when you bite into it, your whole mouth just tingles and it's so refreshing and delicious and yet creamy and decadent all at the same time? I do. So you need to give the media something fresh and decadent, something timely that they haven't heard of. You can't make them do the work. So I was constantly approaching them with already baked ideas, already baked fresh pies. You cannot be giving them the ingredients. Say, I'm a designer. I like doing quick, affordable fixes for homes. I like to work on a budget. That's not going to fly. They have to do too much work. These days, they don't need it to come from a PR company. You don't need to be going through other channels or people who know people. These days, we can easily get to anyone's mailbox through just a couple of Google searches. Thank God for LinkedIn. But you need to show up in that mailbox with the baked pie. And you also need to know when you're presenting this idea that's fresh and timely, what their cycle is. For instance, TV works two weeks out. So if you approach them in the summer with a story for back to school, unless it's, you know, late July, they don't care. Whereas if you approach a magazine in late July for back to school, they're going to laugh in your face. They're already working on New Year's stuff. So you need to know the cycles. Magazines work six months in advance. TV works two weeks in advance. Your local newspaper, it depends, but it's probably like a month in advance. Okay. And you want to approach them with your entire idea and maybe even some fun pops. You want to, of course, keep it short so that they're not reading an article in and of itself. But for instance, with something local, you want to make it something of interest to those readers. So what's of interest? When I opened my store on Main Street here in Dobbs Ferry, I approached the local paper and said, I have a brand new storefront coming to the Main Street in this town. And we're going to be having a big party. I'm going to be sharing tips. I'm going to be giving away free books. Like that was very exciting. And we got an entire feature in several clients from that article. Wow, that's really impressive. Right. But you want to be thinking about their audience, you know. Right. Okay. So let's say if you have a really brilliant idea for a Christmas pitch for a TV station in summer, they're not going to hang on to that and say, oh, let's call Darla back. I remember in July, she had this pitch for us. Don't even bother about that because they, they don't have the time or the energy to hang on to that. They to just have a two-week attention span, kind of. Exactly. And they're on to the next thing. But don't let that prevent you from first following up. You need to do at least two follow-ups on every idea. Mm hmm which is reminding them that, that you had the idea, circling back. So don't give up. They're really busy and they reward tenacity, but also approach them with another idea. Okay. So for instance, after I was on the Today Show once, I would regularly, every two to three months, write to my producers with a new idea. Most of the time, I would not hear back from them at all. They are so <laughs> busy, so overwhelmed. They don't even have time to tell you no. But I would do follow-ups and then I'd move on and come up with my next idea. But the other thing I want to share with your listeners, Darla, and this is very important to hear because I was delusional at the beginning. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Sometimes I still uh, am a little delusional, but now I know that I'm being that way and I know I'm just using it for escapism. But one thing that you need to know is that press and media, having all those glossy badges on your website is only for credibility. Yeah. It is not going to be the thing that pushes the clients over the edge. The first time I was on the Today Show, I was like telling all my staff, oh my gosh, stand by, man <laughs> the emails, man the phones. We are going to be deluged <laughs> with requests from all over the country for our services. Okay. We didn't get one call. Really? Not even one. Okay, you're doing an amazing job. You're answering all my questions at a time. That was actually one of my questions. What? Why not? Why do you think that is? Because 
you're there giving them great ideas, Mm -hmm. but the call to action is not there. I see. You feel far away. You feel like an untouchable expert. They've gotten the tips they came for and they're keeping it moving. The best way to turn press into clients is to tap into your very local media, like ultra local, the newspaper down the street, the local TV show, and be promoting your business, not your tips. People who are DIYing aren't necessarily hiring a designer because they want to learn how to do it themselves. So if you're saying, hey, I'm launching a new business in your local media, hey, I'm here if you need me in your local media, you are reachable. You do seem accessible. They can walk by your storefront. And I think it makes more sense to start off locally anyway, right? Start what crawling before you can walk. You did mention newspapers a couple times. In this digital age, do you still feel that the printed newspaper is still a viable way to promote yourself locally? Well, almost every newspaper resource has an online version these days. Mm. So I wouldn't think of it as exclusively print, but I will let you know in my small town, which is just 12 miles north of New York City, it's shocked me, but everybody (laughs) reads the local paper. I'm like, what? You know, I don't read the local paper, Darla, but all my peers, all my neighbors, my same age, kids, my same age, they read the local paper. And in the summer, I'll read it for like events, right? Things that are going in our town that we could go to, but people are reading it for tax increases. They're reading it for the crime blotter. (laughs) There you go. Yeah, there you go. I was really shocked with how popular it was. So I think it can resonate. Perhaps it depends on the community, but it's also a good way to build that buzz. And then, you know, you put it up on your social media. Hey, we were just featured in the enterprise. Hey, read our article about XYZ in today's Metro NY. I'd be able to use that time and time again. I could make a blog post out of that exposure. Right. I'll speak from experience to that too, because I have been featured in local press here in Miami and I still get clients from it. Features that were appeared one, two, three years ago for the local stuff. And I haven't been national like you, so I can't really contrast and compare. But I had a thought on the national level because you've done several appearances on the Today Show. Do you think that over time, building that know, like, and trust and you being a repeat expert on that has gotten you clients from on a national level or you're still, no, no, it's just the local. Okay, really? Okay. Because you know what gets me clients is people see that logo on my website. Hmm. You know, I put as seen on DIY Network, as seen on HGTV, as seen on NBC's Today Show, all over my stuff. And that gives me credibility and then people hire me. But nobody saw me on that show. I've been on... I mean, not to toot my own horn, Darla, I've been on a lot of shows and none of them have directly, I actually remember one client I got a referral. They called, they didn't actually book. Their mom had seen me on the Today Show and said to call me, but they didn't actually book. So it's really about that credibility later. Everyone's always impressed. It's one of the first things I put on the homepage. Of course. So what is your end game with that? What is your end game with the national exposures, the book and the public speaking? Tell us what your thought is there for the Helmuth Empire. <laughs> Helmuth Empire. <laughs> well, you know, it's really for that credibility. Okay. It's really to get that buzz going. It's to be able to use it evergreen. Throw back to last year when I gave my favorite tips for a New Year's party on, you know, the Today Show. So it's really something I use for internal leverage, but it did not win me external fame or direct (laughs) money. The only places I've seen direct money are from hyper-local features. That's an amazing tip. Okay, so let's get back to the key lime pie. So we're baking a key lime pie, and we want to do the work for them. We want to plug and play. Here you go, Mr. Producer. This is exactly what I'm going to present. It's all done for you. How can you resist having me on the local news? Plus, look at me. I'm going to be great on camera. What are ingredients in this pie? What are we giving them that they don't have to work? You want to look at the kind of things they're already doing, you know, because you don't want to be offering them tips for seniors if they never run any senior type content, right? If that's not their target audience. So first you want to see all the past things that they've been doing and become familiar with their outlet. 
right? They want to know that you understand them or else you're just going to go in the top of the garbage pile. (laughs) So then the second thing is that you want to speak to them the way they speak to others. So if they use a snappy five word headline, you know, whenever you're on the Today Show, they also put on their website. How do they describe it? right? What are the words that they use? How many words do they use? You can then speak their language, right? Okay. So I know they really love transformations or I know they really love craft projects on air, or I know they really love whatever, right? Because you'll have done your homework. You'll pitch them one that is not what they've done before, because you also want to research what they've done in the past to make sure you're not being iterative, to make sure you're offering them something fresh that tingles in their mouth, like that key lime (laughs) pot that they can show to their producer and their producer, their senior producer above them is not going to say, we did that one last year. And I imagine that's just as easy as going to like the local NBC website and searching for that topic to see what has been presented there. Is that how that's done? That's exactly right. Just go to the archives and see what they were doing last year at this time. And then you'll say, okay, they really love holiday gift segments, but they've done holiday gift segments on a budget. What if I do a holiday gift segment, but spin it so that it aligns with the trends of the season, right? Or the most expensive gifts you could possibly buy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You want to say, you know, that doesn't align with my brand. So the other person you want to check in with is what really resonates with you? Who are you first? And then from your vantage point, because I'm affordable interior design, Darla, so the most expensive gifts is not something I'd be an authority on. (laughs) Right. Me either, really. You know, first, what resonates with you? And second, what are they looking for? And I will tell you, it's a lot of freaking work. Okay. So be prepared to spend hours on this and not even get a response. Be prepared to pitch over and over again. You'll have the door slammed in your face many more times than you'll hit it. But when you hit it, it's something that gives you legitimacy in your client's eyes for years to come. Are we putting together a presentation or are we just spelling it out in an email? How involved? It is an email that just gives that fresh take, that fresh idea, but you do not give all the tips, right? They don't want to read the article itself. Like a treatment, kind of. Yeah, like a quick overview. You might want to give a couple of the most salient ideas, right? But then get out. And then maybe in your follow-up, give yourself some place to go. Oh, I wanted to also let you know I was thinking of it from this angle. I've got all the vendors lined up and I'm ready to go when you are. Giving them something a little bit new, a little bit fresh every time you reach out to them, even if it's about your old idea. I love it. You actually gave me the idea to reach out to do some aging in place when you're talking about the <laughs> the senior living one. I was thinking, oh, those ageist bastards, why wouldn't they put that on there? <laughs> and I wasn't speaking of any outlet in particular, but I'm just saying know their audience when you're writing to them. Right. I love it. This is really actionable stuff. Okay, so now let's talk about your book a bit, because this is part of the synergy about being the know, like, and trust and the expert in being visible. We had Luann Nagara on episode 191, and she told us how writing, she's on her third book now, the, the book launch is coming out December 10th, how writing a book has made such a huge difference for her and her business as far as speaking, television gigs. And this isn't your first book that's coming out either, right? Have you written another one? I think you have, right? So I have two books, but the second book is just a refresh of the first. So basically my publisher was like, the other book was very successful. We want to do a paperback version, but we want to spin it even differently, which has been a little deceptive because then people buy both my books and they're like, it's almost the same. And so basically it was just like, how can we repackage this? Right. Okay. So how has the book helped you in any of these? Has that gotten you any clients or has it gotten you more TV gigs? Here's another reality check. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So pull up your pants, have a seat, you know, draw the whiskey closer to you because books are not a way to make money at all. Okay. You certainly shouldn't write a book because you hope to make money. If you do make money, you're one of the rare few. Luckily, I have made some money, which is rare. What a book is in this day and age is it's a business card. It's the shiny new version of a business card. And so it helps people to get to know you. It helps 
to put you sort of at the next level, like that business card that has the really thick card stock. It's like that kind of resonating, but that's what it is. But it does lend credibility to your expertise in the space to be a springboard to help get you some of these features. Don't you think it's helpful or or am I wrong? Well, especially if you want to spin it in the news, like the local news, if you want to use this as like a book launch, that's huge, right? Or something like that. So think of the book from like a 360 vantage point of not just being the material itself, but also being the events you can create around it, a book signing at a local bookstore, all these things you need to think of it as an opportunity and not actually as a book. It is like a key, right? It can open some doors and it can put you on a different different level. It can introduce you in a new way. But now that self-publishing is so ubiquitous, it's not that special anymore. (laughs) I was thinking about self-publishing a book for myself. How redundant is that? And I'm not going to be special. You're right. It is a lot easier to get out there and get a book. And it seems like everybody has one anymore. So I wouldn't write a book just to have the shiny business card. There's so many other ways to be relevant in this time, like a podcast, right? And I don't think you have to do a weekly podcast. I think you could do a set of 10, like just the core 10 principles. And, you know, you'll still be on Apple for years and years. You'll still get tons of visibility and you don't have to be chained to a desk. I've been doing a podcast for almost six years now. And there are days when it, I feel chained to a desk. And there are days when it feels as exciting as the day I started. But I certainly, again, that's not a venture you do to make money. That's a venture that you do to gain visibility and credibility, just like that book. But you want to choose what comes organically to you. I love to write and I love to present. And those things are things that fill me up, whether or not I make money, whether or not they get me anywhere. That's what the, one of the number one rules to make money is actually just to do what you love and do it well. Like if you're going to reiterate other tips that you've heard other places, don't bother. Like give us something fresh that's you. And you know, I've actually stopped focusing on the press in recent years. The time that it takes, I've lost a little passion for that sort of commitment to hound the different outlets. And you do have to have a commitment. You have to have a schedule. Oh, today's the day I check in with this outlet. Today's the day I check in with whatever. Yeah. I'm moving on. Do you have a PR agent now or has it always been you? Have you ever had one? Mm -mm. Really? Never had one. Never done that. Always done it myself. Wow. Yeah. You could be a PR agent. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, then it goes back to, you know, do you think you have anything new or innovative to share in that space? And when I released my book, and I still feel to this day that it is like important work. You know, I really wouldn't have written it if I didn't feel like I was really contributing to society because it was a pain in the butt (laughs) and it took a year of my life. So that's how you want to feel about it. I would not still be podcasting if I didn't feel like it made a huge difference. And it does. Hundreds, thousands of listeners that listen to you and and tune into your podcast. And like I said, you're in my head before we even met here on this. And uh, right now I'm very excited. I don't feel chained to my desk, just so you know. (laughs) Well, that's right. But you do want to check in with yourself because life is too freaking short. And if COVID has taught us anything, it's like, I'm not going to do what other people say legitimizes me, whether that's having a corporate job or writing that book or having that podcast. I'm going to do what feels valuable to me and to the people I want to reach. And the minute that changes for me, I mean, I'm not a person who starts something new every day, as you can tell from my six years of podcasting, but I check in with myself. Am I still, you know, achieving what I set out to achieve? Right. And when that changes, like for the book, my book came out, my most recent version of the book came out uh, two years ago. I kind of want to put something new out there. I don't have anything to say right now. I don't. So I put out something else instead. I put out an academy to train designers in my method. But it's not a book right now. But it's still helpful. It's still giving. And it's still still something you feel passionately and relevant about. And we are going to get into that. It's helping in a totally different way. But you have to tap in to inside yourself. Don't run anybody else's race. Because, you know, the time and energy that it takes to make something good 
is not worth it if it's not authentic. A hundred percent. So a lot of the designers or thought experts listening (laughs) are thinking, you know, this sounds really nice. I would like to reach out to my local television station with the tips that you've given us, but I'm very camera shy or I'm I'm not comfortable on camera. I'm not used to being on camera. Before we get into the what up wingnut round, what advice can you give our listeners to to get over themselves (laughs) and to get better on camera? Well, if you're not comfortable on camera, don't go on camera. <laughs> you know, be on a podcast, write an article. There's lots of ways to put yourself out there. Have an amazing blog, tweet up a storm, be an Instagram, you know, amazing person. You don't have to do the stories, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think that on camera is the ultimate for everyone. There are people who should not be on camera, Darla. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't say that. You said that. I said that. <laughs> I, I will own that. Yeah. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if you want to be on camera, but you feel you're not good, mm-hmm. just do what you should do in any profession if you want it, but don't have the training. Get the training. You know, I was an actress before I was a podcaster, interior designer, book writer, any of that. Aha. Uh-huh. They are skills that I have tapped into. And that is how I'm successful on camera. I had years of acting training. I majored in theater. That makes sense now. A place that I am passionate and that I can easily go to without stressing myself out. Okay. I'm not an actress, although I would love to be. That's very fascinating for another show. But I have told the listeners that just practice getting on camera. If it's something that you want to do and you're you're shy about it, but it is an end goal that you really want, just keep doing it. After a while, you get comfortable. It doesn't really matter anymore. Well, and I think it's hard to see yourself on camera to assess. I don't think you should be training yourself for on camera. I think you need to hire a professional who can help you see Hmm. Because I had the same problem. I hated listening to my podcast when I first started. And luckily, I had a podcast producer who would sit in the room with me and say, we need to do that again. Because I couldn't see my own self. I felt nervous. I didn't want to listen back to it. And I had to get over that. But it's hard to get over that by yourself. How hard was that to get that feedback? Well, you, you must have thick skin. I think that would be a little bit... The hard in the beginning. Oh, do that again. That sucked. That's why you've got to want it. Yeah. Right. I wanted to be good, but I think in a medium like acting or podcasting, it's hard to get a objective view. Yeah. Where does one go to get camera training? Oh my gosh. There's so many online classes. I mean, of course it helps if you're in a place like New York, LA, Miami, Mm -hmm. Chicago, right? There's tons of coaches who will work with you one-on-one, but there's also a ton of online programs. Just Google. Camera training. (laughs) Yeah, on camera training. And you will find so many programs. And I do feel like no matter what you want to do, if it's outside of your area of expertise, you need to get a little expertise really hard to just do it on your own and magically get better. I think there's some shortcuts. And one of those shortcuts is hiring a coach or teacher. I love it. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google it today and I'll put it in the show notes. (laughs) You'll be overwhelmed with the number of leads. And then you could go put it on, you know, I belong to lots of interior design Facebook groups. Sure. You can reach out and say, I'd like to start making some videos. Has anybody worked with a coach? You know, that's a great way to distill the Google overwhelm into a few great leads. I love it. Betsy, you've given us a lot of actionable takeaways with this key lime pie of yours. Now I have to ask you if you're ready for the What Up Wingnut round. So ready. Bring it. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. 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 Betsy Helmet, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? I would be a money tree because uh, money trees are, they can be little, they can be big, they can be lots of different things. They are very hardy. You can neglect them for weeks at a time and they still thrive. They can survive through nearly anything. And they're a sign of wealth and prosperity, which of course, you know, I'm going to love. Of course. I need to get one of those. I, we have only one other guest who said money tree and they swear by them. They say they work. They're amazing. I put one in my feng shui corners. I've got it all figured out with my bag watch chart. But also I forget about this one. This one is up on a high bookcase. I totally forget about it for weeks at a time. It's thriving. Wow. That's a good sign. That's good for you. Yeah. And that is kind of who I am. You can put me in a little corner and I'll thrive. <laughs> that's good to know. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Manifest your dreams. 
If you could be one golden girl, who would it be and why? Oh, I'm totally Dorothy because I'm kind of a bitch. No, I'm just kind of like this. I don't pull any punches. And, you know, I don't think that's I'm just very transparent. And that's how I want. I'm from the show me state, darling. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And mm. I want people to just be really upfront with me and I'm really upfront with them. And I feel like that's Dorothy, right? Uh, yeah. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I loved your podcast so much. You were just so direct, <laughs> so Dorothy that I, it, it, it was, you just, just so good. If you knew me, what would you have called me? If you say Blanche, I'm going to come through this screen right now. Um, okay. Then Dorothy, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to come through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a profound effect on you either personally or professionally. The Pumpkin Plan by Michael McAllowitz. It is a really great book that I reference at least once a month in my business. I haven't read that one. I have uh, read Profit First. Yeah. Is The Pumpkin Plan different? Yes, very different. And I reference it a lot more than I do Profit First. But of course, I always pay myself first, Darla. So I've learned that lesson from Profit First. You know, Seth Godin says there's only one takeaway in every business book. And once you find that takeaway, you should close it. <laughs> and um, there's one takeaway in the pumpkin plan and then close it. But I use that takeaway all the time. Excellent. I'm going to have to read it then because I thought it was just uh, the same thing, but I'm going to have to look into that. Oh, God, no. Betsy Helmuth, please tell my listeners where they can find out more about you, your podcast, and your awesome coaching. Yes. Well, you can find us at affordableinteriordesign.com or Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. That's it? Okay. <laughs> that's it. Just go to the podcast because I feel like that's the best place for designers, right? My website is more for clients who want to hire a designer, gotcha. but the podcast is really that place where I meet with other people who are designers, people who want to be designers, where we come together, where we share ideas. So that's for that. And if you want to hire me, you'll go to affordableinteriordesign.com. Awesome. Sounds terrific. Betsy, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. You've been an amazing guest with lots of takeaways. You have an amazing week. And since we're recording this before Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, I am thankful for you, Darla. And I really appreciate you having me on your podcast. Same here. Thank you. Bye. Mmm, pie. Who doesn't like pie? And key lime pie, no less, my favorite. Clearly, this was an interview that was made in heaven. Betsy Helmuth and I are destined to be besties because <laughs> we, we share the love of the same kind of pie. But seriously, I love how she broke that down with the analogy and having all the ingredients in that key lime pie to present to producers, to pitch to newspapers and have it be fresh and tangy. Don't give too much away, but have it all baked in for them. So all they have to do is pull the trigger, point you in front of the cameras, turn on some lights and say action. And she was also very real. If you don't want to be on camera, don't be on camera. <laughs> Where I was going with that was more so the people that do want to be on camera, but are a little shy about it and maybe want the training, but we got to that too. And you can just Google video coaches, video training in your area, or really just practice, practice, get on Instagram, do some lives. And if you're someone who isn't comfortable on camera and you really just hate it and you never want to do it, no matter what, you got to do you boo. But I will say from a marketing perspective, a marketing standpoint, that being in stories and doing video and being on camera is super helpful for your business and for getting you out there in front of potential clients. So that's just my thoughts on the video part of it. And newspapers are still viable, the local sections, right? And you know what I was thinking during the interview, but I didn't say it, was that the demographic of the people that are still reading newspapers might be your ideal demographic, expendable income, a little bit older. So that's something to give some thought to as well. Don't discount newspapers. And Betsy was right. All newspapers now have a digital online presence as well. So get some backlinks while you're at it. So thank you again to Betsy Helmuth for being on the show today and giving us some bomb takeaways on visibility and getting out there and broadening your reach. Also, be sure to check out Instagram's new guides feature. Play around with it. Let me know what you think. Info at wingnutsocial.com. Would love to hear your thoughts on it. Be sure to follow us on social at Wingnut Social. And that is it for this week. Be sure to tune in next Wednesday when we have another expert guest talking about some amazing expert business stuff and social media tips. And you guys, be sure to have an amazing week. Thank you for tuning in. I am so grateful for you. 
You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only the first step into accelerating your business the Wingnut way. Head over to wingnutsocial.com or call us at 1-877-WINGNUT to see how we can help you take your business from social mediocre to social media master. We'll see you on the next episode of Wingnut Social, your social media tightly fastened. Betsy Helmuth, please tell the listeners where, where shoot. <laughs> these are these are called bloopers. These Betsy. are the bloopers. <laughs> yeah. right. You can for now, example for the Would you like to 10x your strategic <laughs> hamsters? <laughs> because one hamster is not enough. Men and news. Men and news sesh. Men and news sesh. Now it's time for mini new sesh. Yeah. Good boy, Mango.